U.S. journalist Arwa Damon is the founder of the International Network for Aid, Relief, and Assistance. It focuses on kids in need. I know, Arwa, that, that your group is, is conducting aid responses in Gaza right now, and I would imagine you're in contact with doctors as much as possible. What's the most recent you've heard from them? You know, we're trying to conduct work inside Gaza, but it's extraordinarily difficult. One of the uh, founding members of Inara is a doctor who's actually in Gaza right now. He's been there since day two, Dr. Hassan Abu Sitta. He's been between uh, a number of different hospitals. And, I mean, some of the stories that he's telling us, a few days ago they had to amputate um, a child's leg. It had gone septic, and they didn't have proper anesthesia. I, the boy's screams were just echoing throughout the corridors of the hallway. He was talking um, a few days ago in another message about how he had to treat one child with 50% uh, uh, burns, covering 50% of of his body, and then another girl that needed a partial amputation on, on her foot. There's not enough morphine for these kids after they get their surgery, so the pain on them is just constant. And then the big challenge, of course, is when we're talking specifically about these kinds of war injuries, they often require multiple surgeries for the child to be able to fully recover. And then, of course, on top of the war injury, you have this very severe, um, deep, deep, intense mental trauma as well that's going to take years for a child to work through. So you, I know you've been covering war for, for some 20 plus years and you've worked to protect kids in, in, in Syria, in Iraq. Can you put some perspective on, on the challenge of helping kids in Gaza No. What we're seeing in Gaza is like nothing I've, I've ever come across doing this for 20 years. I have never seen such an intense bombardment of such a densely packed, small sliver of land over such a short period of time. No humanitarian organization really knows how to fully deal with this, especially given the reality that even humanitarian organizations inside Gaza are not safe. Uh, UNRWA, the main UN aid agency in there, is reporting that dozens of its facilities have been targeted. It can't reach some of its warehouses that are actually inside the Gaza Strip with you know supplies that people need right now, but it, it's unable to reach them. I mean, the, the dynamic of what we're going to uncover and, and have to respond to when we actually get in is so unknown that we, for example, are developing multiple different plans based on multiple different hypothetical scenarios. Because you're not just talking about a population that is, you know, at war or being bombed. You're talking about a population that is being bombed and is deliberately having humanitarian aid supplies cut off from it. Just one last thought about the aid that you talk about. What are you trying to get in how close are you to being able to get more doctors, uh, more aid in? And what's the status of, of, of the workers you work with on the ground? Look, first of all, just to give some perspective in terms of aid going in, on a normal day when Gaza is not under insane bombardment, you would have between four to 500 trucks of aid going to the Gaza Strip per day. Right now, the max we've seen is around 36. In terms of what Inara is positioning itself to do, look, we very much focus on filling in the gaps. So we look at what everyone else is doing and then where can we best position ourselves. And we often end up, and this is our main focus point really, is in the medical and mental health space. Things like, you know, children's kits that can help them sort of distract themselves. Um, we focus on hygiene kits. We focus a lot on sanitary products for women. Clean underwear is something that, you know, people don't necessarily think about, but it's so needed uh, in times like this. You don't have the, we don't have, our language doesn't have the words to sort of describe what's happening right now. Arwa, thank you very much for spending time with us. I know you don't have much of it. Thank you for having me.